finally, finally, finally. It's a great day to be a UFC fan, baby. It's a great day to be a UFC fan. Because your boy Hamza is coming. Conor McGregor is coming. Two of my favorite fighters in all of UFC history. But Hamza, right now, is number one on the do list for a reason. I mean, the guy is number one on the do list for a reason. There it is right there. Yeah, above John Jones, Islam, Yuri, Aljamain Sterling, Colby Covington, Adesanya, Volkanovsky, Edwards, Jamal Hill. He sits at number one. Those are my 10 favorite fighters right now, by the way. Hamza is number one. And we really go out on a limb for this guy because we believe he's the future champ. And we've been speaking with the loudspeaker for a year and more right now. We told you the Nate Diaz fight was garbage. No point in having that fight. It turns out that he fought Kevin Holland instead. Probably a better fight to see just because Kevin Holland is still uh, a, a rising guy. A guy that you think, okay, this could be a challenge for Hamza. Nope, it didn't turn out that way. And Hamza is saying that the UFC finally has a fight for him. Told him that he will be fighting in Abu Dhabi. And this is a celebration, ladies and gentlemen. This is a celebration because we've been waiting for this. Hamza says, UFC told us we have a fight in Abu Dhabi. So that's what I'm waiting for. I'm already here in Dubai. Living here. Training camp. Everything is good. So I've been in shape for a long, t- for a long time now. I've been in Thailand training camp. I've been here in training camp. I've been in Sweden training. So just waiting for the opponent and the contract. So we'll see what's going to happen. And the belief is, is that he's fighting Kamaru Usman. Didn't we ask for this fight for the last three years, right? When Usman was the champion. And isn't it funny that Usman wanted nothing to do with Hamza? Zero, right? Why do you think that is? Because he knows Hamza is a tough fight. Now Usman realizes, okay, I lost the title. I'm not beating Leon Edwards. Or I didn't beat him. And I'm likely not to get another shot. I'm like Colby Covington right now, who lost to Usman twice. I'm not getting... So now let me start making some money before I ride out into the sunset. And Hamza says, you know, he knows where the money's at. He says, Usman wants to fight. I'll make his last fight. He wants money. He knows where the money is. Everybody knows the money. Now I'm going to fight this guy in Abu Dhabi and smash him, finish him. Then they have to give me that title shot. The unfortunate thing here is that he's still not going to get a title shot. I mean, if he fights Usman at 170, that makes the fight... Much more interesting because there's a lot of people that question whether Hamza uh, can make weight or not, right? They question whether this guy can make weight. So it's a it's more interesting if it's at welterweight. It's it's scarier for me personally as a fan if it's at welterweight because I don't see any reason for him to fight in welterweight right now because they've been making him wait too long. And as you creep up into those later twenties. You start getting closer to 30. Making that weight is harder to do. You can do it, but your strength is not there. And he looked like he was in trouble at times against Gilbert Burns. There were other things going on at that point in time, which played a factor against Gilbert Burns. But the fact is, is that weight cut caused him a problem. Then you can get on him for the Nate Diaz weight miss, but there was no motivation to, I mean, listen, for him to get to 170, he's got to really squeeze down. It's like McGregor getting to 155 still. That's crazy. And if you saw uh, McGregor forever, you see what he had to go through to get to 155. I mean, and you're going to do all that to fight Nate Diaz because the UFC needs someone to go in there and beat Nate Diaz in his last UFC fight to diminish his value and maybe make him re-sign with the UFC. I mean, let's be honest. That's what was really going on. And some of you out there are like, oh, he missed weight. The UFC should punish him. Come on, man. Come on, man. So he fight. He fights Kevin Holland at a weight that Kevin Holland is more comfortable where he don't have to cut weight. It wasn't even middleweight. It was 180 and just smashed him. He just smashed him. And this is what it sounded like that night. And as I played his clip back when him and Kevin Holland fought, please understand that when him or McGregor fight, even Adesanya really, I'm a nervous wreck, but when Hamza is fighting, I'm really a nervous wreck because of all the, <laughs> because of all the trash I've talked over the last three or four years. You know, it's like saying, "Hey, I'm going to graduate high school," and you're telling your whole family, you're telling everybody, "I'm going to do it. I'm going to graduate. I'm going to make it through." And then senior year, uh, 
you quit and you don't get your high school diploma. Now you got to see all those people. And they're like, I thought you said you were going to do this or I thought you said you were going to do that. So if Hamza loses, <laughs> I'm in trouble, man. Because you think there's some comments now in the Q&A toward the end of the show. Wait till you see what happens if Hamza loses. Because everybody that hasn't been to the channel in a long time or is a regular person that, that isn't like me or a few others that say Hamza is going to win it all. All those people are coming back to let me know that I don't know what the heck I'm talking about. Forget the record this year of 130 and 72, right? None Those 130 correct predictions, which is probably one of the best out there right now, or at least I'm definitely up there in the top 10 with some whoever's up there. Went 10 and 2 last week to get, set us up for the break. So you got all these things going on. All that is diminished if Hamza loses a big fight. It just is. And if this fight takes place, it's going to be in October. I mean, by that time, we're going to have a hopefully a great record if the year continues the way it's going. And all that comes crashing down and I'm back to Chris Cross, you don't know what you're talking about. So I'm I'm a nervous wreck when the fight comes on. Now, you may not see it on me because I'm going to be pumped up because my man's fighting. But at the same time, I'm a nervous wreck. Hamza has to win. So I wanted to set this clip up to so understand what's going through my head uh, in this fight. But thankfully, uh, the fight against Kevin Holland, which was a much better fight than Nate Diaz for me. I'm glad that it happened that way. Forget Nate Diaz. He would have smashed Nate Diaz. Okay, let's be clear about that. So this was a much better fight because I wanted Hamza to be tested. And he wasn't tested at all. And I might add, Kevin Holland came back and beat Santiago Ponzinibbio, who was 30 and 6. Okay? And finished him. So don't tell me Kevin Holland isn't a bad dude. I'm trying to tell you. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, Hamza. Let's go, baby. And we're seconds away from this thing kicking off. Herb Dean pushing Hamza Chamaya back. And here we go. Here we go. No touching the gloves on this one. Kevin Holland tries to touch gloves, and that's a major mistake. He gets taken down right away. And Kevin Holland gets back to his feet. And Kevin Holland good at defending these positions. So, But Hamza Chamaya is the guy that when he gets a hold of you, he's tough. Kevin Holland's talking to him a little bit, though. And Hamza on top. Now, Kevin Holland's got the arms wrapped around, or the legs wrapped around. But it's Hamza standing up on top. And the fans chant USA. And Hamza very aggressive now on top. And it's Kevin Holland desperately trying to get Hamza off of him. Kevin Holland works to a better position, gets taken down again. And Holland's trying to get out of it. Man, a lot of wrestling here. And Hamza is on top. Oh, he's got a Diaris attempt in, but it's not tight. Kevin Holland's all right for right now, but man. It's nonstop, relentless pressure <clears throat> from Hamza Chamaya. Now a nice Diaris choke in now. For Hamza and Holland trying to get out of it. Come on, Hamza. Oh, now Kevin Holland's close to getting on top. And Hamza continues with the DR stroke here. Man, and Kevin Holland's in trouble a little bit. Now he rolls out of it. And Hamza goes right back to it. Man, relentless, man. Relentless. And Hamza is squeezing, but Kevin Holland continues to roll out of it. And Hamza rolls back again. And man, Kevin Holland is really good, but man, Hamza Chamaev is even better with the DR's choke. And Kevin Holland's in a little bit of trouble here. He's not moving as much. Come on, let's finish this, Hamza. Let's finish this. He taps. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Woo. Let's go. Kevin Holland is pissed. Man, and Hamza, I don't care if the fans don't like it or not. I'm trying to tell you, Hamza Chamaev, relentless pressure, bro. Relentless pressure. And the fact that people were upset with him coming into this fight 
should mean that you respect him even more. Because this guy can't – look, you see the, the touch of the gloves by Kevin, and right away Hamza goes in for the takedown. So big mistake right there from Kevin Holland. I mean, Kevin Holland's got his hand in the air for the touch, and Hamza comes right in for the takedown. I was And I was getting ready to say from the onset, no touch of gloves for Hamza. And by that point, he gets a DR choke. Kevin Holland gets out a few times, but Hamza is relentless. And eventually, Kevin Holland is forced to tap. Wow. Yeah, and Hamza got no respect from that win, right? Because now it's, oh, he didn't make weight, and the UFC shouldn't give him a fight, and, you know, come on. We're about to hit. Think about it. That was UFC 279. He's not going to fight till UFC 294. That's 15 pay-per-view events. That's roughly... 15 months maybe you got a couple months where there's two so maybe it's like a year 12 months 13 months that's how long he's had to wait to fight so he's paid his dues now for missing weight okay and i know he's got the visa issues and all that but come on man the ufc is global they can go i mean they, they have no problem going to london or anywhere and they love abu dhabi so if hamza's got to fight in abu dhabi then the ufc needs to make it happen and you know what's going to happen when he beats Usman. Oh, Usman's washed up, this, that, and the third. Usman still beat Colby twice. He ruled the welterweight division for years. And if Hamza goes in there and smashes him, I don't want to hear anything. It's not, I'm not talking about a fifth-round KO like Leon Edwards or a five-round decision. I'm talking about if he goes in there and beats him in the first, second, even the third, and finishes him, come on, man. I don't want to hear it that Usman's washed up. I don't want to hear it. And if this thing is at middleweight, Usman is going to be feeling great. He's going to think about how big he is at welterweight. You talk about middleweight. He's going to come in looking huge, like a true middleweight contender. And maybe some of the problems that Usman is having right now, because again, later in your career, it's harder to make weight. That might be the issue. That's a big guy trying to get to 170. He goes up to 185. He's going to be huge and feeling like a new man. So he's coming in at his best. I don't care what anybody says. And when Hamza smashes him, he deserves uh, to get credit. I don't want to hear anything. I'm just letting you know now. I'm not reading any comments that says Usman's washed up. Hamza goes on and says, I'm the biggest name without the belt, no doubt. So when you fight with me, it's more money, more fans. When I fight, everyone is waiting for my fights. When I fight with Gilbert Burns, we weren't the main event. Everyone was waiting for us. And it's true. Even Cristiano Ronaldo. A famous guy, a legend from football. A lot of guys are asking me, when am I going to fight? When I smash somebody. This is the fight business. Everybody has to fight and make money. If you don't sell tickets, you don't make money. That's the bottom line. He continues, I want to say to Uzman, I am ready. Just sign the contract. Let's fight. Let's make money. You want the money? You want the money fight? Let's go. I'm going to squeeze your head. It doesn't matter. Let's go. Let's fight. The weight classes... If you feel the best, you don't need to speak about weight class. I feel the best. For me, it doesn't matter. I cut on fight night to 170 or 185, all weight classes. I'm the king. And, it, I mean, that's the one thing I wouldn't have said. I wouldn't open the door to 170. And maybe it is best because maybe he gets a weak Uzman who then maybe you got uh, some room to say, hey, okay, Uzman's washed up at welterweight. But if he go, I want to see this fight at middleweight. Because I don't think if he beats Usman, they're giving him a title shot anyway at welterweight. I just don't believe it. And then, God, you know, God forbid, Colby beats Leon and they get a rematch. You're looking at another year or two. So I want to see this fight at middleweight. If it's going to be a meaningless fight, let's get it at middleweight where he's comfortable, where they're both solid, and there's no excuses. Because neither guy is really a true middleweight right now. I mean, Hamza is, but he isn't, right? He's not ranked. That's what I want to see is these guys fighting at their best. And I'm, I'm just crazy excited uh, for that fight crazy excited I mean I wish it was tomorrow October seems like a long I mean that's Halloween that's a, that's a long way we haven't gotten to the beginning of the summer barely yet we're talking about he's not fighting till Halloween come on man he's gonna fight wait he's gonna fight wait hold your breath till the end of the night last fight of call UFC at its height yeah bringing that thunder with all his might saying step up, step up, step up. wanna fight huh hold up Think twice, ah. gladiator assassin, reckless no abandon, walk through that cage, he'll leave your ass stranded, wake up, hey, where you at, hey, got hit in the head with a baseball bat.